Dreams are fed by our own desires. They dwell within us since we are born, and this is what we call them until they become real. But, have you ever wondered what happens to dreams that never come true? Prieto awoke in the same spot again. His memories vanished at dawn. There was little excitement behind circus walls. Wandering nor here nor there whilst picking gypsophilus was often the main source of entertainment. Just as every night, Prieto had the recurrent feeling that the strange beings and pantomimes that inhabited the orb were somewhat unlike him. Clowns are said to hide sadness behind their disguise. Strength to put on a smile had abandoned this one clown. Fears of being branded as ridiculous drove him to desperately seek approval. In the end, his possessive little puppet took control of his movements with the strings that held them together. Pietro was insecure and shy and had never really found the courage to mingle with the others, but surely just around the corner that was all going to change. Looking at the clown, Prieto came to realize that there was something he wanted to say, but the puppet wouldn't let him. What if he just cut the strings? Prieto felt that the rest of the beings in the circus weren't like him. The strange beings in the circus would do the same thing night after night, like clockwork. The more he stared at them, the more out of place Prieto felt. While Prieto pondered over how to free the clown, he encountered greasy, obese Bran Mac, who as he usually did, was milking his poor skinny cow. Greed is a bottomless pit, a never-ending effort which never provides true satisfaction, and Grand Mac was the epitome of a greedy soul. He found utmost joy in storing all kinds of objects, for they were his most cherished treasure. He boasted to others about them and took displeasure in seeing them touched by hands that were not his own. Why do I see you lurking around here? Look at the mess you've made, spat Grand Mac. Prieto, a little scared, dared not move. You are jealous of my wealth, are you not? said Grand Mac. Prieto timidly glanced at Grand Mac's prized possessions. An old pair of scissors caught his eye. Two colleagues walk into a beat, big round eyes and long, long feet, said Grand Mac. Prieto, eyes fixed on the scissors, did not utter a word. In view of this, Grand Mac said, Are you dumb, or you just cannot talk? Do you like my scissors? If you want them, you will have to give me something precious in return. Round like a saucer, unaffected by blows, and relentless bouncer, Prieto felt that the rest of the beings in the circus weren't like him. The strange beings in the circus would do the same thing night after night, like clockwork. The more he stared at them, the more out of place Prieto felt.
Even if the thought of giving one of his precious possessions away did not come easy to Grand Mac, the sublime spherical perfection of Prieto's finding impressed him. After some hesitation, Grand Mac decided on offering a truce. So it seems that you were not so dumb after all. You may have the scissors in exchange for the ball, he said. Silence is a hard argument to refute, and Prieto remained tight-lipped. Grand Mac handed over his precious scissors to Prieto, and then admired his newly acquired orbicular treasure. Prieto returned to the clown's house. Again, he had the feeling that the clown wished to share something important, but the puppet wouldn't let him. Armed with his scissors and guided by his kind heart, Prieto decided to cut the strings that held the clown captive. When he did, an enraged puppet stormed out of the circus walls, huffing in anger and leaving the door open while shouting, do not call it quits! Unshackled from the puppet strings, the clown broke his silence and warily said to Prieto, Once, a long time ago, I was just like you. I too was full of hope. But over time, I became infected with laziness and neglect and soon ended up trapped in my own misery. I wholeheartedly appreciate what you've done. I fear it is too late for me, but you still have time to leave this place. It is said that beyond the circus walls, within the great volcano, lies the well of truth. There, dreams come true. Follow me, and I will show you something, offered the clown. Prieto felt that the rest of the beings in the circus weren't like him. Prieto followed the clown up to the gate, and once there, the clown said, I have been watching you closely, night after night. And I believe you still have not learnt how to keep your memories at sunrise. Do you see that circular stone on the floor? It is a memory stone. There are many of them spread out throughout the orb. If you place yourself on top of one at dawn, time will begin to accelerate. Try it for yourself, and you will slowly see that when the sun rises, you will no longer feel lethargic, nor will your memory fail you. Daytime arrived, and the memory stone took Prieto to the Gisophila field, a place of splendor, filled with light that made Prieto feel so light as a feather and full of hope. Still unaware, Prieto ignored that those beautiful spores floating through the air were going to be much needed on his journey.
While Pretto busied himself with picking spores, night fell. Pretto returned to the orb, but on this occasion, unlike other nights, his memory had not deserted him. The clown stood next to the memory stone and, determined to help Prieto, remarked, I see you have not been idle in the Gisophila field. You have handpicked quite a few spores. Do you remember the bright flowers that grow on the circus walls? They are called Gisophilas. These flowers give you hope and make you be seen. If you cease to pick these flowers for a while, you will become invisible and will vanish into thin air until night falls again. Although flowers only grow naturally behind the circus walls, it is possible to plant them elsewhere. Come with me, said an enthused clown on their way to the gates of the Stonewood. Intrigued Prieto kept track of the clown. Once inside the wood, the clown said, Here, this here is the ideal spot to plant the spores you pick. You will soon see how quickly flowers full of hope bloom. Prieto did as he was told and planted a spore. In no time at all, bright flowers sprung up from the soil. The clown, full of excitement as he had once been before, said to Prieto, if you so desire to explore the orb, you ought to learn how to administer the spores correctly. I have marked out specific areas of the wood that are suitable for cultivation. If you plant seeds in these areas, you should be able to visit the flank. They tend to contradict themselves a fair bit, but the truth of the matter is, they hold many secrets regarding the orb. Not far from where they live lies a big stone heart. It is said to hold a secret within. Prieto entered the stone wood guided by the glimmering spots the clown had marked out to plant Gisophilus. Prieto began to feel somewhat weak. It was clear that he was in need of the magical Gisophila in order to remain visible. Prieto planted a spore and it instantly grew into a plant. When he picked it from the ground, he noticed a renewed sense of hope from within which spurred him onwards. Prieto needed Gypsophila so as not to become invisible.
Prieto needed Gypsophilot to become visible again. Arriving to the land of the flanks was no mean feat. However, Prieto stuck to the task and managed to find their house. Prieto approached the flanks, who showed no sign of surprise at his presence. The face is a mirror of the soul, said one. Looks can be deceiving, added the other. Prieto stood totally still and wondered whether or not the flanks were talking about him. The confusion is crystal clear, affirmed the mouthless flank. He must be the clown's friend, said the smirking flank straight away. The hardest thing about having many friends is to know which ones you can call true, added the mouthless flank. I wonder what he's after, one flank said. Curiosity killed the cat, said the other. But cats have seven lives, you know, added the first. Maybe it's love he seeks, said one of the flanks. Eternal love lasts only so long, added another. I love you not, you love me. 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 The flanks chanted repeatedly. Prieto was clearly starting to tire of the conversation. Love was in the air and Prieto was beginning to choke. He decided the best thing would be to leave the flanks as they were and continue to search for the big stone heart that the clown had spoken of. A big flower, some tiles and a huge stone heart. Prieto thought that if they did hide a secret, the flanks had not been of much service to him. Or perhaps they had. The effect of the gypsophila was fading, and Prieto began to feel somewhat weak. I love you not, you love me. I love you not, you love me. I love you not, you love me. The flanks clearly knew far more than meets the eye. The heart rose up 
and what seemed to be a part of a key came out from within. Prieto became invisible. He needed Drosophila so as not to disappear completely. Prieto left the stone wood as dawn was fast approaching. He needed to find a memory stone in order not to forget the recent happenings. Luckily enough, the clown had marked out a route for him using farmland as reference. Prieto planted the last...